Welcome to Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. On July 14th, Salvage the Rail organization held an expert panel of speakers to explain the benefits of option 2A. This option would convert Hart's heavy rail system into light rail cars and bring the rail down to earth from Middle Street to Ala Moana. Statements that option 2A will save taxpayers $3 billion in four years of construction time was not just tantalizing to hear, but by the end of the meeting seemed as credible statement that could be accomplished. At the meeting, renderings of our downtown streets as pedestrian friendly, yet coexisting with the light rail cars running along the avenue, conjures up images of what Honolulu voters had in mind when they approved the rail project versus the megalith-like concrete pillars that will straddle both sides of our streets, blocking our sunlight, and creating a Star War-like station structure hovering high above our heads, blocking out our beautiful, easy breezy waterfront views. With us today is Scott Wilson, who is a member of the American Institute of Architects and spokesperson for SalvageTheRail.org. Scott, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it's it very much. Thank you for having me. We had you back in February, so this is yeah. kind of an update on this is where update. we're at. Yep. Things have changed. Things have changed dramatically. Changed. So um, that was a great meeting. I, thank it you. was really a great meeting. It was packed full of great information. And I guess the thing that really caught my brain, my mind mm -hmm. was the fact that, and you guys have, you know, you've, sta you've st stayed firm to this, that this option 2A could save taxpayers $3 billion and save four years of construction time. Yeah, it's a, and option 2A wasn't something we created. It was created by the FTA, actually. So back in June of 2016, FTA sent a, a letter to Hart and said, you guys, you, we need to get a recovery plan going. Here's six options. Look at them, figure it out, we'll figure out what you want to do. So I had no idea that was part, the case. That's why we, we titled our forum Option 2A, because Option 2A is end uh, the heavy rail at Middle Street, and then from there use light rail on the street uh, to go on into downtown and, and, and points east. So we, we brought in these experts, and they were national and international experts on light rail, uh, both planning and costing, as well as, as just uh, overall technology. And they, they uh, gave us a ringing endorsement. Do our legislators know that fact? Or do they think that the uh, Honolulu Transit Task Force came up with 2A? No, uh, I, I mean, I, I think they anybody know. who's they familiar, know. I think that the thing is with the legislators is that they try to keep all that technology uh, issue separate from their mm -hmm. work. They are, they're, sort of, they're in charge of taxes and, and raising funds. And so they kind of tend to say, Okay, Hart, you are the experts. Um, we don't know. You know, we're going to have to just take your word on this. You say you, you need another uh, $3 billion. We're really troubled because we've been giving you f funding so far, and, and now you want even more. And, right. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to limit all of our other ability to pay for other uh, needs in the state. So uh, th we're trying to give the legislators a preview of, of the fact that uh, from a technology point of view, there is an option and it can save a huge amount of money and time. So it's okay if they don't approve any further funding. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about cost then because I think that was the operative point of the meeting. Uh, certainly that's what I walked away with and, and how you guys broke down how you could stay within budget without having to increase the excise tax as far as putting it out for further duration. Right. And um, that's where I thought the value of that whole meeting was all about. And that and some other things that we're going to talk about in the show is some, you know, the livability issues that yeah. uh, light rail could bring to our, our downtown versus this megalith structure that we're going to yeah. potentially have. So yeah. let's take a look at um, some of the cost, that cost sheet. <clears throat> and this is how we're going to get to that point. This is how we're going to get to um, to those lower costs. So, why don't you just describe what this is? Well, we put this into our into our show just to remind people that uh, light rail construction is very shallow. It is really no deeper than than existing roadway construction. And as you can see in that picture, this is a typical. This was taken out of a technical manual. It's 14 inches deep and it's eight feet wide. So uh, this does not, we will not be disturbing any EV. We, uh, this has been a, uh, a mis misinformation put out by Hart is that it, we are gonna dig five feet deep and 30 feet wide 
and that we're going to be unearthing just all these bones when we dig our light rail. But actually, we're, we're not changing any existing streets because all we're doing is, is digging up the, the street bed, the normal road bed, and then putting in concrete and steel. Next one, please. So this is the actual. And then this is an actual one in Portland, Oregon. And as you can see, that's like a two by 12. That board that's propped up, that's, that's the, the depth that you normally go, a two by 12, or maybe that's a two by 14. I can't really see. But anyway, it's roughly a foot or a, a 14 inches deep. You know, I just keep hearing, you know, um, comments that you have to dig so deep and so far. Yeah. Uh, isn't it true that by holding up the stanchions on the elevated system, the pads are going to be unbelievably large that and thick. There is, yeah, the, as you know, the, um, the, these enormous the 6 to, to 10 feet wide, and depending on the soil and, and the softness of the soil, but some of these columns, if you go out and look at what's been already built, I mean, they range from 6 feet to 8 feet to 10 feet in diameter, so they take up an entire, an entire lane. So I'm not, I'm not looking for you for an answer on this, but if the concern is, if, if option 2A may dig up bones or mm -hmm. ar archeological issues are presented by that, what is the, the plan 1A gonna bring for that same issue? Right, I mean, th there's actually far more uh, digging involved because uh, these, some of these go down 280 feet. These, these 10 foot wide, eight to 10 foot wide columns that you're gonna see in the downtown, yeah. they are admittedly, they're 100 feet to 150 feet apart, but Still, there's a lot of them, and, the, and they're right in the exact wheelhouse of where the Hawaiians w used to bury their dead in right. Takaako. Well, I got to tell you, then, I'm, based on what the pictures I just saw here, I'm scratching my head on that criticism. So Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Again, uh, this is Dallas. Uh, uh, just a quick shot showing the, uh, the Dallas light rail, and you can just see the depth. Uh, I apologize it was taken at night, but it's, uh, it just shows a typical... Uh, light rail um, tracks in the street. And then here's your cost breakdown analysis. Right, okay. So let's talk about that. Yeah, I, I, I know these. there's a lot of numbers here. Uh, let's start at the bottom, t just so everybody understands. The current funding for HART is $6.8 billion. Down there at the bottom, mm -hmm. current funding. Cost to Middle Street, $6.22 billion. Okay, right. so we're dealing with a, about 600 million, 0.6, okay. little around there mm -hmm. of, of extra money that we have left over. So that's the money that we want to use that we're saying we can use to build the light rail into downtown. Into Ala Moana. And, and, and there's, you, you see at the top of the screen is the construction costs, the redesign costs. You just look at that total number, 611. 11 million. Okay, so we are ex really in the very, very close. close magnitude to what we already have. So the $450 million for three miles of rail, that's basically the photos we just saw. That's that, what's involved. Right, yeah, and that's being generous. They, these things on the mainland are, were built for $70 million, $100 million a mile. We've added in a, a construction cost factor for Honolulu. We've, in some cases, we've actually doubled the local cost. Um, so that we're using 150 okay. million. And then, of miles. course, the criticism I see in the paper all the time is that we can't do this because the rail cars have already been purchased, and therefore, option 2A has no viability. Right. So actually, uh, now that we've gotten this option 2A out, we actually have two alternatives within this option, and and those are not on here. But one of them involves just using the existing cars. Mm -hmm. So where it says eight new rail cars, we can actually wipe that out because. Uh, our newest alternative is to just end the uh, the light rail, uh, sorry, the heavy rail mm -hmm. at middle, right. and actually start up another system, a light rail system. So use the cars that have already been ordered, and they'll, there's no okay. change. Well, let there. me. That's that's an interesting so concept. That's, that's new. I, I haven't heard I, that. I hate to throw that at you. It's like it's like on <laughs> on air. I'm giving you a curveball. Okay. Well, let me. Cast the curveball and see if I can throw it back to you, okay? Okay. Um, by getting off the heavy rail and then entering on a light rail, right. would that jeopardize any FTA funding? Because you're not a one-seat, one-ride. No, uh, not okay. th that's one-seat, one-ride is never an FTA requirement. That was never a requirement, okay. Yeah, so it is a two-seat ride, yes. But actually, when you looked at option 2A, they, uh, they actually said in their option 2A, uh, end like Evan heavy rail and begins light rail at middle. So 
we were the ones uh, who said, well, we would like to make a one-seat ride. We think that mm -hmm. would be more uh, desirable from a rider point of view, and right. it is. Yeah, no question. It is. The trouble is, A, we've got some cars already on site. We've got some, some stations that are already being built. Those stations are what you call high platform or high floor. Correct. So, so people are getting on about three feet above the rail. So we have a problem. We, uh, you know, we would have to go back in to some of those stations. I think there's two that have already appeared to be, they've already cast the floor. Cut that floor out, recast it three feet lower. Okay. So, so this is what we're, we're, we've got some wheels moving because given the pragmatics of what's already been built, and is continuing to be built as we discuss. You know, we know there are nine stations that are, have already been contracted, and so every day they're out there, they're starting to work on these. So, mm -hmm. so our newest is a sort of an alternative to where instead of a one-seat ride, it's a two-seat ride. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, by doing that, you are saving $18 million. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't object to that. Who can? Yeah, yeah. As a taxpayer. Well, and, and modify equipment. Uh, so, and, and, and of course, what we haven't even talked about is the savings on all of the land that was going to be bought on Dillingham. Right. Because Dillingham, they are paying, they are paying about a thousand, uh, $100 a square foot for a 10-foot strip the entire length of Dillingham, which is about two miles. So, so it, it, my calculation is actually that's a million dollars per every 100 feet. Therefore, they're going to be paying somewhere around fifty million to a hundred million for all that land. That is no longer needed. So that is actually money we can take back. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all the impact to businesses, legal costs for people There's fighting huge, the yeah, you know, fighting yeah. the evictions. Just the, that one blood bank case right. has just been has just been a travesty for Hart because yeah. uh, blood bank is like everybody's favorite auntie, and you're attacking them and telling them, <laughs> give us your land. Or else. Or else, you know. <laughs> no, it's not. And it's very <laughs> We don't want your building. We just want your parking lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so. I know. So it, it, it is, uh, and, and our experts also went with, uh, I drove them up and down Dillingham, and we looked at all the conditions. And, and besides the, the fact that it's a very narrow right away and you're going to have to buy land, there are both sides of the street have very high voltage utility lines right there. Some of them are literally six inches from the curb. So you have some major utility relocation costs which have never been calculated, added, in. never been what put about, into the hard budget. What about option 2A? Would that have to deal with those utilities or not? Zero. Zero. No, no because option 2A goes on. So North there's 8. an unknown factor of, of relocating the utilities, but that hasn't yeah. been disclosed as yet. Yeah, that's 400 million was the rough number that HECO has always said they need mm -hmm. to, to move those utilities. So there's 400 million. That's almost. Okay, well, as yeah. a taxpayer, yet another disclosure that's unbeknownst yeah. to the total costs right. required to fund this thing. Yep. Okay. Yep. All righty. Well, um, so let's just go down to the bottom line, and that is, um, well, actually, let's, you, you, you still have your. Um, your engineering costs and your architectural costs, eighty-three yeah. million. Yeah. And then your total is within the guidelines, yeah. within the budget. Yeah. And and as I said, there's one thing. I, I if we go to this option two, uh, this option or alternative two that mm -hmm. I've been telling you about with a separate system. Right. Okay. At the Middle Street um, Transit Hub, we're going to have to put in a new uh, operating and maintenance shed because we have a new new train. Right. So. That is a cost. It could be a hundred million. It could be two hundred million, which we have to figure in. And of course, uh, that's a, that's a new uh, alternative. But you have cost and savings of fourteen million, eighteen million, and then another uh, for the equipment modification. There's sixty-eight million. No one right there. I don't know, frankly. Mm -hmm. We we have the land. There, there's a the city owns a big hunk of land at Middle Street uh, bus transit stop. But basically, it's going to have to be reconfigured, you know, right. to to uh, be able okay. to bring in the trains and service them. All right. Well, yeah. we're going to take a break here, and we'll talk a little bit more about costs, and we're going to move on. Okay. I'm Tim Apicello with uh, Scott Wilson, and this is Hawaii Moving Forward.
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, welcome back. I'm Tim Apicella, and this is Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm here with Scott Wilson, who is the spokesperson for Salvage the Rail. And today we're talking about um, a presentation that took place uh, about a week ago on, on how the, the option 2A could actually be within budget and not have to extend taxes any further. And it's a fascinating topic. And Scott, thank you for taking the time to share it with us. You're welcome. Um, yeah. I think before the commercial break, we basically said this could pretty much be done within the cost allocation uh, right. for the existing budget of rail. And this option 2A plus, we'll call it 2A plus, I don't know what you want to call it, yeah. um, could actually have a very viable way of getting this thing through. I know. I think uh, a lot of us were a little bit con uh, you know, uncomfortable that we were going to have to change change the, all the cars, the rail cars, the eight rail cars that are supposedly out here. And then the fact that the, the stations are under construction is a, is a little bit of a troubling because there's there's platforms that have to be cast. I mean, that's some, that's one of the main elements of a station, it's a platform. Mm -hmm. And and suddenly we're saying that those have to be lower because we want to use low floor cars. So as our experts talked with us last week, um, they, they kind of spun out this new alternative. Interesting. Uh, so, uh, but e either way, we, we have the money now, and, and I think the, uh, the kind of the, the end message of our forum was we need to talk to our legislators and tell them no more money right now. Well, that's, I'm glad you, I just about ready to bring that up because I had Randy Roth on the show about a week ago. Mm. And he said, as long as they're getting funneled the money, there's no incentive yeah. for them to consider yeah. any alternatives, whether it's option 2A, mm. your, your new uh, uh, um, yeah. idea, or it's the bus rapid transit yeah. idea. It doesn't matter what good idea is on the table. They don't even want to look at it because as long as they're getting the money, why do I need to look at it? Yeah. I mean. So that's a, that, that was a hard thing for our experts to, to understand hear. because they, they're, they're focusing on how do we solve the problem? What's the best system? What's the best? And then they had it. And then they said, well, why can't we just tell that to your, you know, to your mayor? But, uh, but we had to explain to them, no. Uh, They've been very comfortable with a stream of money so mm -hmm. far, and uh, you know they they haven't really been listening to us. Right. You know there was one point, last point on cost that I thought really caught my eye or my my attention was that um, they said that New York has 470 stations, and of those stations, there was only 150 escalators that serviced all those stations. Um, we know that, be it elevators or escalators, that is a huge component of cost and certainly the maintenance and upkeep of, of escalators they're always breaking down yeah. and particularly in this um, high salt atmosphere that we have here mm -hmm. it's you know I, I could see that doubling from a normal city's cost of, of, of maintenance yeah so yeah that was Doug Tilden uh, and he, he is his his expertise is really designing stations and both the light rail as well as heavy rail and he brought up some really good points about, about why do you have all of these escalators? Escalators are not an ADA requirement, okay? ADA requires an elevator, okay? We need an elevator. But these escalators in an open air environment with, with salt air blowing through all the time uh, and our rain and our sun, we are just going to have incredible maintenance costs trying to keep those things going. So would we need elevators if it was... You know, light rail oh, on the on the street? Not at all. Not at all. No, you know, we we've got pictures. In fact, you got one yeah, right there, right of, a, there. Of, a, of a guy rolling on with his wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. So there's that's a huge, huge cost savings. Well, that's and again, this one. plan doesn't really talk about the annual maintenance. Um, you know, they they throw out numbers yeah. of 100 million to 120 million, right? Just for an annual cost, not yeah. to mention all the cost replacement that you should set yeah. aside for reserve uh, capital replacement, right? Yeah, Those numbers aren't even out to the That's another hundred million. Randy Roth had, had estimated that that's another, another hundred million. million. You would have to create a sinking fund because yeah. basically all this equipment is going to uh, wear out after 20 years. And so you've got to be building up money along the way. I want to talk about how this all kind of, kind of delves into what 
the, this concept of a livable city, that uh, the city should be meant for people rather than for yeah. vehicles. And I like there's you a, to talk there's to a you long about that. history of that. Yeah, frankly, this goes all the way back to Frank Fossey in 1992. Uh, AIA uh, has has been trying to talk with mayors uh, for 25 years now about this, and uh, when uh, Mayor Fossey proposed. Uh, an elevated system right along uh, uh, the waterfront, right by Aloha Tower. We were doing hand drawings in those days, and we had these, you know, big renderings of, of that system, and we were just saying, this this is not pedestrian friendly. We want to encourage people to be able to walk over to our harbor from our mm -hmm. downtown, enjoy <clears throat> the waterfront, enjoy the views, and that's that's actually one reason why they tore down a, a ramp that had been blocking Bishop Street for years, for about 25 right. years. So everyone rejoiced when the, the view was opened up again to the ocean. And, and yet, and, and yet uh, when, we, when we made renderings of these stations and we made a, a very famous rendering of the downtown station right next to the Dillingham Transportation Building, and it was, it was hideous. And even uh, Governor Ben Cayetano picked it up and used it as kind of one of his, his uh, centerpieces of his campaign. But we just couldn't, we, I guess people just uh, couldn't get, appreciate the aesthetics of it, but the livability is a, is a key term. We did not use that term. That was, that was coined by Vukan Vucic, uh, mm -hmm. who, who, was our, who was our keynote speaker. And he, he reminded us of this bigger issue. He actually made a, a statement, which I really love. He says, you know what, even if elevated rail was cheaper, than any other kind of rail, I would still not tell you to do it, and and that that just kind of you know kind of set us back on our heels because we had really we had really kind of uh, tried to concentrate on the livability aspect, the the, the pedestrian friendly, just the the streetscape, making 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 our streets pleasant for walking and cafes and, and people sitting outdoors and want, looking at the views, all of those things. Um, we had kind of we kind of hit our head, uh, you know, against the wall on that. So we started concentrating on cost, and that's that's kind of how uh, we've mm -hmm. been we've been operating the last six months. But, but that's a subset of your efforts. But a, our original concept mm -hmm. was the aesthetics, the, you know, the livability. You know, the um, urban village concept, or the the term urban village. Yeah. Um, you know, I back in my transportation days, about 15 years ago, that was just coming out. You know, it's been 15 years, and you would think that uh, cities across America, including Honolulu, yeah. would have caught on, or have caught on, many of them have caught on, that they're looking for urban villages yeah. rather than, you know, city structures that are megalith in, in nature. And mm -hmm. um, where's Honolulu in all this? You know, we, we if you really look to Kaka'ako, um, you can see, um, because that's a completely separate planning agency, the HCDA is actually getting it. They... Have, they scrapped their entire uh, development code, rebuilt the whole thing to concentrate on the, on the streetscape and making a lively streetscape. And I think as you walk around uh, on the streets of, of Kakako, especially at the Ala Moana end, you're starting to see it, it all coming to fruition. And, and so we do have an urban village. And, and, and if you look to, to talk to millennials, they love it down there. Even though they can't afford it, they can't afford those million dollar condos, they love the concept. They love the fact that they can just wander around from shop to restaurant to gallery, and they don't need a car. If they want to, they can ride their bikes. Okay. There, there's good trees. So we have city planning in Kaka'ako that has yeah. this urban village concept. And right. now we have, but we have this elevated rail, which is 100% opposed to this concept. Yep. Yep. There's, the, there's this a, dichotomy is is, dichotomy. is is kind of driving me crazy. Yeah, We're, it is. It, it. I really think elevated rail is a, is a freeway mentality from the from a long time from ago. From the fifties, from, and from yeah. the fifties yeah. and sixties. Yeah. Frankly, it, one of our experts called the rail of just freeway architecture. They yeah. said, you know, this thing, this thing does nothing for the street. This is going to cause a blight. It's going to cause you know shadows and it's blocking views and it's noisy and dusty. You know, why would anyone so want to be around there? So much for easy, breezy views of, of, yeah. of, of palm trees and sunsets. It's, and and, and uh, another, uh, you know, uh, kind of example is what Waikiki and the Hotel Association did. As soon as Mayor Hanneman announced that this thing might have a spur into Waikiki, who oh, no, they, we they rose up really fast and said, no way, yeah. no rail in Waikiki. 
We they were savvy. What's your position to know. on light rail, Waikiki? Uh, they they have welcomed that. We've talked we've talked to Waikiki. Through we're running out of time, yeah. unfortunately. And what I want to do is just I want to transition to where we are with the legislature. How much progress is salvage the rail making with our legislators? We are meeting with individual legislators. They are, um, I think there's, there's a, a, a real interest in this. They are really uh, in, a, in a overall, uh, in a hard place because they really don't want to increase taxes. They, they have, and they feel kind of lied to with, with the mayor and the, and the heart that, that they came. Two years ago, they said, oh, we promise no more taxes. Just give us this and we're done. We'll finish a project. Not two years later, they're coming back and they're needing another three billion, and and everyone kind of knows in the back of their mind that three billion is still not going to be enough. It's not going to be know, enough. Well, we already talked about hundred million per year. We've got a hundred million, million. In, yeah. in operating expenses. Yeah. We need a hundred million in sinking fund for the, to pay for the cars. Uh, it, it's going to go on and on, and and we we think this is actually the sort of perfect moment to put a pause to this whole funding. And, and really look at some what, options. What's the message you would give anyone who's watching this show right now or in the near future? I, I urge, uh, as I did at the end of our forum, um, for anybody who's concerned about this, talk to your legislature, call them up. They're, they're on summer break, but they're in their offices, and say, no more, no more funding for rail right now. We, we, we need a pause. We need a, a serious look at some options. We know that the federal money will still come in, but we've got to look at some options. I think that's a good message, Scott. I want to thank you very much for coming on my show. Thank you. Delivering a very important message to all the people who are concerned about this project mm -hmm. and those who may not even have their antennas up about it. So yeah. thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm Tim Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Aloha.